Welcome everyone hello, hello. to Monday West Coast Swing. We are here on March 6th, 2017, and we are starting for the month of March and some of the month of April to do kind of an upgrading your West Coast Swing. So sometimes you'll take a class, maybe at an event, for instance, the Boston Tea Party that's coming up, and during that workshop, they'll teach you a complicated sequence, kind of like what we talked about in the lab today. And there are always many building blocks that go into that pattern. And you might not always see those because everyone has limited time during which to teach their lesson content. So I'd like to spend this month going over some kind of common building block patterns and common footwork variations. Like I know we've talked about the moonwalk before, but that might be something that's fun to spend some time on. We could talk about some apple jacks a little bit at some point, things like that. Um, maybe boogie walks even, I don't know, we'll see. We'll do <laughs> anyway, so today we are talking all about hammerlock. For the basic hammerlock position, you do a push break tuck. I take my right hand down and then up, which we spent a lot of time talking about today in class. Right? Because if you wanted to put your own hand behind your back, you wouldn't try to just take it from this level behind your back. Right? That makes you want to say uncle. I take my hand down and then up. On the other side, down and then up. Down and then up. So when I'm with a partner, I want to take their hand down and then up. And it can be easy sometimes when you're thinking about the footwork and the arm work to forget that you need to also take the hand down and then up. So we talked about the basic hammer lock. We also talked about how you could do hammer lock from an outside turn. Three, four, five, six. For me as a leader, that feels a little bit more comfortable doing that with all single steps. So just walking two, three, four, five, six, because it's such a low energy pattern, I'm trying to be nice and mellow. I could still do a triple step. One, two, three, and four, five, and six, but that tends to amp up the energy of the pattern a little bit, and I want to keep it nice and calm. We next talked about exits from this position. So the most common is a double inside turn, or kind of like a double right side pass. I'm going to prep slightly right, prep slightly left, and I'm lifting the hand, my left hand, at this point to the followers forehand. I, I could lead this pattern entirely with my right hand that's hammer locked, but because we have this hand, I'm going to use it. Three, four, five, and six. From this side, same side. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The next exit was a little bit more complicated, so we get a hammer lock. However, if you want to do that, I'm still prepping slightly to the right. You'll notice leaders, I'm taking my step further diagonal than normal, because I need to get all the way to the opposite side of the sock from where I'm on. So one, two, I'm keeping the hand low. I'm going to rotate in place, in place, and step across the slot. So I'm onto my left foot. Followers, we're keeping our frame here. We're not letting it go, and we're not fighting leader, but we're simply keeping the connection we had before in the same position. As I'm doing this, I'm keeping, or I'm transferring my right hand from behind the followers back to the followers right bicep. Two, three, and four. It's important that I don't release the followers hand until I've caught their bicep, otherwise they can take the arm wherever they'd like to. From here, we're both going to spin. The easiest is to triple around. Five and six. You can take seven and eight to fix the distance if you want to. Or if one of you wants to do more spins. So all the way through, we get the hammer lock. One, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. The last pattern was not completely followed, but it's a very common variation. So, two, three, and four, five, and six. This is all normal. I'm going to take the hand up. I'm going to toss it down. The followers are going to take the hand up. So if the momentum comes down, the natural thing to do, even though it's not connected in West Coast Swing, is to use that momentum rotationally around through. As the follower is doing this stuff, we know that Desiree is releasing my right hand. At that point, I transfer the hand to the followers back. I'm not just letting it go. Because once they start ducking, if I pull my hand away, that looks kind of silly, right? Like, why is the follower ducking? There's nothing to duck under. So I want to keep the arm there. And just transfer it. She does her back, turn down her shoulder, and catch the father's right hand. You could do this pattern 
especially without that extra triple to five and six and just toss the hand to keep the momentum going a little bit more. So one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was your class. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.